Look at the baby. <laughs> Hi, meet the cow. They're all eating their alfalfa too. Good Clara's not there. She's right there. Trying to see if she missed something. No, it's your wife. You ain't your shoes. You, 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 do, do, you. Hi, Mr. Blackie. Okay, okay. I don't let them out earlier because otherwise they lay their eggs anywhere else. Over here, I forgot to close this lid. I opened that during the day so they would get water by the rain. Which, in case you didn't know, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows, it is the best kind of water. <laughs> and look how happy they look today. I thought for sure I was gonna lose them because it was so so bad. And look, even my baby seedlings love it. See, when I tell you I am not lucky with spinach, I mean, not one has sprouted yet. But look at all that lettuce and all the Swiss chard. I'm super excited. Okay, so I was I was thinking about what I'm gonna do when the new buckling comes, okay? Because and maybe you can help me in this. Maybe if you keep goats or you follow somebody who keep goats and you've seen this scenario, maybe you can leave a comment and share some of your ideas. But I was thinking, uh, where am I gonna put the new buckling when he comes home? I mean, he's gonna be a week old. So from this week, probably seven more weeks and he'll be here. And honestly, I even asked the breeder, how is your experience with mixing older bugs with eight or yeah, eight week old babies? And she said, well, um, I'd feel better or I feel better when they're about 12 weeks to incorporate them and help them stand out for themselves. Now, in case you didn't follow us back then, Taz was introduced to Rocky and Duke, our weather, when he was eight weeks old because he was so ready to breed that I think he wasn't even eight, week old, eight weeks old when I moved him to the buck pen, but he was already extending and he had been for a couple of weeks um, before I moved him. He was interested in breeding since he was born and I know that's a dominance thing, but when I saw that he was already extending, I thought to myself, that's the one thing I don't need right now. So, of course, I moved him, I put him with Rocky, and it was, I mean, it was fine, but he had to fight a lot to be respected, to have a spot in their shelter, and to eat with everyone, and he is barely now getting that respect back from Rocky. Rocky is not aggressive. He's the sweetest boy goat that you'll ever see in your life he is so sweet and even though i haven't seen him try to hurt Taz at all ever and i've kept an eye on him um i just don't know if now you know he's over a year now i'm wondering how good it would be or how traumatizing it would be for the little boy to be thrown into a buck pen with a bunch of older goats and how that is going to affect him so. Hi, Taz. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so loud. You're so cute, but you're so loud. It's okay, it's okay, you're itchy. I'll help you. Oh, I'll help you. Can't help you, man. <laughs> Yours hurt. Yeah, they do. We've had a uh in our neighbor's yard well she lives about what maybe a quarter of a mile from us but uh, she's seen it and they cover a 60 mile radius so this is still his territory I am probably gonna have to lock them up at night honestly I really love the idea to let them be outside and as soon as it gets dark, they go inside their shelter. They really don't, they're never outside. They get fresh water, one of the blue buckets, 
they get fresh hay, put it in that feeder, and it's inside their shelter so they don't have to come out if they're hungry or if they're thirsty. They have everything inside their shelter. Now, I'm kind of worried about Rocky and Duke because the stories go that whiter goats are the ones that are the easiest prey and they have a lot of white. <laughs> so, I am considering just doing something. What I didn't want to do was doing something provisional again because this was a provisional thing that now I'm gonna have to uh, you know get rid of all that roofing on top and the sides and everything just to put something that is a little bit more nicer looking we always recycle so we use what we have and then as soon as there's an opportunity for something that looks better then we do it but right now or at the time when we built this uh, we didn't have anything that looked better than this. So I posted the boys for sale and I got a response from somebody local that wanted to take the three boys. And so she said, I am moving to this new property. I've seen the property uh, like we somehow talk. We're not friends, but we do talk and we follow each other on Facebook and stuff like that. So she said, you know, I am going to get this property. It is already in uh, escrow, but I won't be able to take the boys until the end of June. I want the white one as a buckling and I need two weathers for brush eating because we do have a lot of uh, blackberries and I really don't want full size goats. So I thought that'd be perfect. That property is amazing with hundreds of acres. We have a pond. They have woods, they have a pasture, they have berries everywhere that they're trying to clear and um, a huge barn where they'll be safe at night and they will be, the, the weathers would be tethered so that means that they will, you know, be able to be outside grazing in different spots every day. But the only thing is, oh, and they would be going at night inside the barn. But the only thing that really it's a problem for me it's the idea of keeping them until the end of june it's not only a feeding problem which bugs are really not that expensive to keep um, but it's still i would have to kind of start the tethering with mr black and mr cow it would help us with our brush and mowing and stuff like that but uh, that means that I would have to keep Mr. White either tethered with them or find a solution. So I was thinking, well, maybe this is kind of a blessing in disguise. And since the boys are going to stay until June, then maybe, you know, I can make a small pen where they can, and small is relative because you can never put them in a, such a small space because then you expose them to parasites or, it's it's a whole thing so I'm kind of thinking do I even want to do this she's very very interested and I told her you know let's let's do this let's count on that if it doesn't work out for you and you can't or, or you know something happens then we always have Mocha's kids or we have um, Annabelle kids so I mean there's not a problem with baby goats. This ones in particular are going to be older by June and I don't mind keeping them around. And I think in the end, again, this is a blessing in disguise. Maybe it'd be a good uh, group of boys that would stick together and kind of uh, become friends. So when they're introduced or at least our buckling is introduced, to the boys, the big boys, they are going to have a better understanding of what it is to be living with bucks. So, and stand up for themselves. So I don't know, like, I, I was telling this to this person, I really would love for them to go, that's the tempting part, to be able to sell them and that the three of them would stay in the same farm, 
you know, would go into an amazing farm where they're gonna have lots of room, they're gonna be very much loved. But in the end, I, I think they would have to stay for a bit longer. I know myself, I'm going to grow attached to them. And in the end, it's going to be a struggle for me. Now, too bad, right? I mean, <laughs> that's part of farm life. You don't breed them and keep them all, which I understand. But it's going to take money for me to build a pen for them to be together if I, you know, not tether them and keep them in one pen. I'm gonna have to build a completely different pen. I'm gonna have to buy fencing, which is not cheap right now. I'm gonna have to buy depots, which is not cheap right now. And I'm gonna have to do a shelter again. Even if we use recycled materials, there's a few things that I'm gonna have to buy to cover that shelter. So because of that, um, it's, you know, it makes me wonder if that's the right decision. So I told her, you know, if it was okay if in this deal we could still offer the boys as available. And if somebody comes and gets the boys, then before then that'd be okay. And then I can reserve some of Mocha's babies for her. Now, I don't know if Mocha is gonna have, you know, that many babies but if it's the summer I mean a month later Annabelle is gonna have her babies we can bottle feed one you know I can supply that milk for her if she does need it and that way we can work something different uh, but I still really I'm not sure what would be the best call as far as our buckling that is coming I think it'd be amazing if he could spend some time with Mr. White in a pen Mr. Cow and Mr. Black, and I think it would be like the perfect bachelor pad uh, for little boys. <laughs> I just think it'd be amazing. So there's two options. I'm not sure yet what's gonna happen, but I did wanna share it with you guys because I've been hinting that there was a big ordeal about the boys uh, and selling them. So they're still available. Um, they will be available and um, if somebody can come and get them before then I probably would I'm not gonna advertise them more than the post that I did and where she contacted me but um, so it again it leaves me with a question are they gonna be here to keep company to our little buckling uh, or maybe you know is this a good thing that is happening and I'm not seeing it? Now this is a mess. Like this garden is a mess. I know it. But it's all for a reason, okay? That's what I told my husband. Like all these sticks were inside the goat pen. And I decided to make taller garden beds to make my life easier with the ducks and for my back. I have very terrible back problems. So I have an angry bunny looking at me over there. He's like, what, what? He just has a little um, long hair that he parts in the middle because he likes to look very handsome, right? Bum bum boy. Anyways. Um, so I'm gonna fill this up with a bunch of sticks and all kind of organic matter. And then I am going to cover the inside so my soil doesn't go through that so I can make a taller garden bed. It may, I may not be able to do the same thing with all my garden beds in this duck garden, but it's gonna help me with the ducks. The ducks don't fly this up. You know, they can fly, but they don't fly up the garden beds and at the same time it's gonna help me with my back that's my compost pile where I've been keeping all the sticks and things that I'm gonna use inside the garden bed and honestly the idea came out of making this bed for compost that is what I'm gonna use on the inside so the soil doesn't uh, get through the holes and in here if you remember, this was supposed to be a hotbed that I did a, a different style following the idea of another book. And as you can see, it's not hot. 
So I'm gonna cover the outside eventually, but for right now, this spring and summer, I'm gonna use it as a garden bed. So what I've been doing, and all the soil that this had was this much, like, this is the deck of soil. So I was doing, last year I did broccoli and I did a lot of lettuce and like stuff that is really not deep rooted. But can you see right now? Look at where the soil is by now, down here. So what I'm doing is, however, I put a lot of sticks way too up into the bed. So what I'm going to be doing, or what I've been doing, is putting the compost that is not done there, the soil that is already made here, and the sticks, I am putting them in here, so that way I can redo um, this bed. But this time, instead of having this much soil, with all this soil, we're going to go a little bit more deeper, so we can do other deeper things, like carrots and stuff like that. I thought I'd make this video to share with you a little bit more about what's happening to the boys in that way get a little bit maybe of feedback from you guys telling me if you've seen this uh, how did it work I mean are you introducing a new buckling to your buck pen and how have you done it before has it worked out how are your bugs what do you watch out for uh, do you separate them at night? Um, I don't know, all those things that I'm questioning myself. And believe me, believe me, eight weeks seems like a long, long time, but it's gonna be here before we know it. And yeah, I just, I just wanna be ready. So, if you're new around here, please remember to subscribe, leave a like, so that way we can share, YouTube can share this video with more people that are looking for this kind of content. Thank you so much for stopping at the farm and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.